Hi everyone, Ian Harvey here, Massage Therapist. Today we're going to talk about the trapezius, the squeeziest of muscles. First we're going to start with a nice anatomy review, and then we're going to work on a client, demonstrate some techniques and stuff like that. If you'd like to skip ahead, you can do so by clicking down on the time codes in the description. While we will discuss techniques today, I want to talk about the importance of trapezius, its versatility, and some things that you might not realize about it. So let's start with anatomy. Trapezius originates from T12 and goes all the way up to the superior nuchal line, which is on your occiput. It goes out to the spine of the scapula, the acromion process, and the lateral third of the clavicle. And you may know that it can elevate the shoulders, but it can also depress the shoulders. If these bottom fibers are firing, they can yank the shoulders down. The fibers of mid trapezius retract the scapula, bring the shoulders back, and both the upper and lower fibers rotate the scapula upwards. So this scapula would rotate like this. If the entire trapezius fires at once, it looks like this. Your head is drawn back, your shoulders are drawn back, your scapulas are rotated upward, and basically it's the exact opposite of how we normally stand, like this. So a slouchy posture requires trapezius to not only hold on to all of this weight, this weight of the head, this weight of the shoulders, and maintaining this curvature of the thoracic spine, but it has to do this while it's long. So trapezius is getting stretched out and expected to work really hard. So if you've ever wondered why trapezius seems to be such a trouble spot for people, consider the abuse that we're putting it through. What pain might trapezius be involved in? Well, because it latches into the superior nuchal ridge, it can be involved in base of the skull headaches, which, as you may know, can sometimes wrap around, or at least feel like they are, to this orbitofrontal region. That pain that feels like it's between or underneath the shoulder blades, that can also be due to the trapezius and its incredibly strong attachment right here to the most medial portion of the spine of the scapula. And don't forget about pain down here. If there's pain down here, I'm going to at least be suspicious of that lower and mid trapezius. And of course, if anyone's got a tight upper trapezius, I'm also going to investigate mid and lower trapezius. It's all one muscle, and I want the entire thing to chill out. Okay, we've got Heather here with us today. Hello. And now that we've got a client in front of us, let's do a quick review of the anatomy once again. We've got the origin of the trapezius coming from the superior nuchal line and this ligamentum nuchae, and all of these spinous processes down to T12, and this lower portion of trapezius comes up and inserts on this spine of the scapula with a lot of insertions at an aponeurosis right by this most medial portion of the spine of the scapula. So all of these fibers are able to tug really hard right on this point right here. Now these medial fibers, they insert further out, they insert on this lateral portion of the spine of the scapula, as well as onto the acromion process. And as we get further and further up, these fibers will start inserting onto the lateral third of that clavicle. So working together, they retract the scapula and they rotate it upwards. So I'm gonna start with just some general warm up. I've got a bit of a little bit of oil on my hands. This is going to soak in over the course of the massage so that I'll be able to slow down. And as I do this, I'd like to talk a bit about the importance of trapezius, especially as far as headache is concerned. So you'll remember that upper trapezius originates from this superior nuchal line you'll be able to feel this ridge up here. It's not extremely palpable, but it's originating from this occiput. So all of these powerful fibers are pulling on the base of the skull. And if you were to ask your clients where they feel their headache, I'm betting a lot of them would report base of the skull headaches. A lot of your clients who have orbital, so that's the eye, a lot of your clients who have orbital and frontal headaches will also report base of the skull 
pain and sensation. And I tend to find a lot of correlation between those two. So it seems to almost wrap around from here forward. So if anyone tells me about having these orbitofrontal headaches, I ask them, do you ever have pain at the base of your skull? And if so, and even if not, I'm going to give this trapezius some extra attention. And now that I'm over to unilateral, I'd like to do some moves that encompass this entire trapezius. I can't always start right up at this uh, nuchal line, but I can scoop up a lot of this superior tissue and drag it downward, tracking closely with the laminar groove to either side of the spinous processes. And following this trapezius all the way down to T12 and beyond. If I go beyond T12, that's going to continue dragging that fascia. If I hear of pain that spans from here to here, I'm thinking trapezius, and I'm thinking I need to go beyond those points. Just as a reminder, if you'd like to find T12, easy ways of doing that are to find the lowest floating rib and follow it back to its vertebra. Or you can palpate for L5, so it's right above the sacrum, that lumbosacral junction, and you can count up, although it can be a little difficult to feel when you move from one lumbar vertebra to another. Either way, we're about right here. And trapezius is not very palpable as we get further and further inferior, but you'll definitely be able to palpate it as we move up. So before we do any more palpation, let's do some more warming up. I'm going to start broad and then get specific. And I'm going to move in different directions. I'm going to move from superior to inferior. And I'm going to move from inferior to superior. It's going to be a very different feel. It's going to give different input to the nervous system. And it'll give the client a different sense of their own body. We're telling a story. And if we use a lot of synonyms, then the body might get the message a little bit more easily. So imagine about where T12 is. Draw a line to the most medial portion of the spine of the scapula. So about right here. And that's where that kite is going to travel. And so pressing toward the spine and a little bit superiorly, you're going to thump over a barrier, an obstacle. You may be able to see this traveling downward, down toward T12. And that, just as a technique, can be quite nice. So isolating that barrier and pressing against it, mobilizing it. And it can also give you a better sense of where that inferior lateral border of the trapezius is. And you can follow that up to that medial most portion of the spine of the scapula. And you'll notice this point is where a lot of people say they've got knots. I'm not a big fan of that word because I don't think it's very descriptive of, of what's actually happening. These this is an area of high physical tension, where a lot of fibers are converging and all yanking on the same point to the same purpose, to retract or to resist all of that forward pull that we get from our posture, and to turn the scapula upward. So we could really go to town on this point and friction it, and try to bust up that knot or bust up scar tissue or adhesions, but I don't think that there's anything that needs to be busted up here. I think that these are fibers that need to calm down, and once that happens, this will be happier. Another way of going about that 
of calming these fibers down is to work with upper trapezius. In my experience, if people have lower trapezius pain, upper trapezius tends to be hypertonic. By the same token, people who have upper trapezius pain tend to have a lot of pain, trigger points, etc. down in mid and lower trapezius. So, if you've got pain anywhere in this area, remember the entire kite. And also remember the origin. So while I'm not directly on top of the spinous processes, I am just to one side. I know this tool looks a little bit funky, but this is how I kind of line my fingertips up. There are other good ways of working with this laminar groove, including using soft fist, and even the Olecranon process. Although I do advise caution when you're using a tool that has as little sensation as the Olecranon process has, if you'd like to always know where you are, keep another hand nearby, kind of glued to your elbow, to give it information about its current location. Now, something that I'd like you to notice as we're getting up into upper trapezius is that it's not just a flat surface. We think of it as a big wad of muscle, but it's not. It's a scroll of muscle. You can unfurl your client's trapezius by keeping your fingertips in place and by allowing your thumb to come upward. This will flatten out that curl of trapezius and allow you to find trigger points or just feel good spots that you otherwise wouldn't be able to feel. And just realize that as you're unfurling this trapezius, you can use that opportunity to follow it up toward that superior nuchal line and just up the side of the neck. And feel how paper thin trapezius becomes as you follow it up. Quite thin indeed. You'll also be able to find some good trigger points in here, some that may be very relevant to a client with occipital or orbitofrontal headaches. And I would be remiss if I talked about trapezius without discussing its feel-good qualities. Trapezius is squeezius. It is one of the nicest places on your body to have work done. So if I'm ever up in this neighborhood, I'm always going to throw in a little bit of petrissage. Just realize that you can be more thorough than other massage therapists. Most massage therapists will do this. They'll just work on this little bundle of fibers right here, but there's so much more. You can work up into the neck. You can use this other hand to work on the upper portion while you work on that meaty portion. You can follow it out laterally. You can follow it to where it intersects with this spine of the scapula. It becomes quite thin as you travel out laterally here too. And it's also quite tight as you get out here. There's a lot of, once again, mechanical tension as you get to this point where the acrimine process and the clavicle converge. So as you're approaching that AC joint, you're going to feel a lot of nice tight muscle. So outline that entire trapezius as you work with it. And feel free to include lower trapezius as well. Tell the client the story of this muscle. That it's not just this bunch of meat right here. No, it's this big kite. So working in both places at once can help to get that across. Working on its entire breadth can help to convey that. And when you're working on trapezius, you need to consider the spine of the scapula, and you need to consider the clavicle. So I can do a little bit of friction on either side of the spine of the scapula here. And just realize that this thumb is going to be working down into infraspinatus as well. And your fingertips are going to be working into supraspinatus. But that's all gravy. That's all just good stuff. That's free. 
Now, before I have her flip, I'm going to show you some places you're likely to find trigger points on trapezius. One is all along this inferior lateral border. Shove it medially. Wait for it to slip under your fingers. And you'll be in a good place pulling back in the other direction to find some really powerful trigger points. You can also trap it with one hand while you work on that border. So you can pass over it first and then pull back or trap it. You'll also find trigger points right near that most medial portion of the spine of the scapula. Just go easy on this a bit. It can feel good to have work done here, but it can easily be overdone. And you'll also find trigger points in this meaty main body where this scroll turns over, as well as on the outermost edges as you unfurl it. So there are often trigger points as you get to this outermost portion. As you follow it out, you'll find some more. And as you follow it up toward that occiput, you'll likely find some more. And as you're dealing with trapezius and you're doing those feel-good moves, or you're doing that more specific trigger point or structural integration type work, realize that anything that you do with the arm or the head is going to change the feel of that trapezius. So I'm not going to change the angle of the head right now. That's something that we'll do while she's supine. But just bringing the arm out like that can completely change the feel of all of these moves that I've already done before. By the same token, bringing the arm out to either dangle in front of the table, which might not be comfortable for all clients, but is for many, or up onto a chair in front of them, will once again completely change the fascial configuration of this upper back. So just use this to make that story a little bit different, tell it from a different angle, make it feel new, make it feel different. And now that we've got our client supine, we can work on trapezius in some new ways. And right now I'm just spreading some hobova. Just realize that anything that you do on the lateral or posterior neck is going to affect upper trapezius. Upper trapezius is the most superficial of the neck muscles. So any deeper work will be working through that. And also be aware that any work that goes near the lateral third of the clavicle is going to be working on the uppermost fibers of trapezius. So if they're having pain up here, don't ignore these lateral clavicles. The stuff that I'm doing inferior to the clavicles isn't doing a lot for trapezius. The work that I'm doing superior to it is. And also realize that anything that you do coming up to the occiput is going to affect trapezius. So if you've got a client who needs trapezius work, they've got mid-back pain, they've got upper back pain, they've got headache, really anything that might be posture related or that might be dealing with the thoracic or cervical spine, I'm going to treat the entire trapezius as thoroughly as I can. Even if I'm just working with a relaxation client, there's no reason not to outline those clavicles and extend all of your moves up into that occiput, and if your clients don't mind you getting some oil in their hair beyond. If I want to target this upper trapezius, a good way of changing how this will feel and of giving new input to the nervous system and of just doing some good feel-good work is to turn the head to one side. And to then work unilaterally. As you do so, just remember that those fibers travel all the way out laterally, and you're going to be able to feel those uppermost fibers that are attaching to this lateral third of the clavicle 
and out to that acromion process and follow them out laterally. Once again, you can outline this clavicle, and again, we're working with scalenes a bit here as we do so. And as you follow trapezius upward, you can once again unfurl it just a bit. And as you do so, palpate that lateral most border. It'll kind of slip out of your grasp as you go up superiorly but you'll still barely just be able to palpate it. And as you get up here, you're also working with levator scapula. And if they're having neck, upper back, shoulder problems, especially if they're having a crick in the neck, then I bet their levator scapula is involved. And just as a final tip, you can always go under the shoulder here and press up with your fingers and do some nice either pinpoint with your fingertips or broad yet deep work using your finger pads. You can create motion. This is going to mobilize those thoracic vertebrae, it's going to mobilize those ribs, and it's going to shove around that trapezius and the border of inferolateral trapezius and allow you to add some movement into this. All right, guys, that's literally everything that I know about trapezius. If you've got more info or other techniques you'd like us to know about, leave those in the comments. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.